but before i start this class please um, <clears throat> do not raise uh, questions which is not relevant to the topic what we are discussing if you have those questions please uh, any questions at the last i'll just give you 10 minutes you can ask any questions please. do not raise any question which is not relevant to the topic if it is something relevant to the topic just wait for me until i finish the topic because i would have, i might have covered that po point the next discussion so at last you can ask me any questions okay please okay boss so now we <clears throat> we trying to understand the hana studio which is a front end client system so we, we understood that it is basically an eclipse based tool and uh, we have got different perspectives in it yesterday we had been discussing on hana modeler perspective where we had uh, different views right so this is the default perspective for hana model where we had systems view where you can go about connecting adding n number of systems here and then get connected to the hana server and then you have quick view which is like easy access screen like for most of the frequent perform operations you will have easy access menu you can just click this menu and access it and let's say you perform some job or activating or something then you get to see the job log and whether it is in progress or whether it has been completed or failure in the job log and this will show you the properties block so any object you select here you get to see the properties of this object and then you'll have another view called various list which will tell you let's say there is view a and view b i'm using view a in view b and view c when i select view a it tells me wherever it's been used various list you will get there okay so this is your modeler perspective okay <coughs> So next we have something called Hana Development Perspective. If I just click this, this is your Hana Development Perspective. When you get it, Hana Development Perspective, you have three views: one is Systems View, Repositories, and the Project Explorer. You have Project Explorer. Okay. Basically, the purpose of this perspective is for Hana native development. When you want to do develop your own. custom applications by using hana native framework like by using o data services or java scripting as service or sap ui5 for designing a front end applications then you go with what hana native development clear okay so basically you in the system so as it is you have system connections in the repositories you basically create something called workspace so there will be two things when you look at hana native development it will be more like an eclipse based development where first what is the object you develop it will be stored in your local system then you basically say share it or you activate it then it creates the runtime object into my server space first what let's say you are creating some sap ui5 application or html file what are the html file you create it is stored in the local system first in your local client then when you publish it gets into server repository the system when it is a server repository server space okay so what it is in the in case of repositories you create a workspace where you have a local system folder mapped to a server repository so what are the file you save it here in your local system and when you say activate it since the local system is mapped to a server repository folder it gets saved into that server folder when you activate so when you so this in the repositories folder you basically create a workspace where you map your local folder towards the the server folder was okay so whenever i save a file in the local folder and say activate it gets activated into the respective server folder what has been mapped to my local folder in the workspace and in the project explorer you basically create your project let's when you say create project you go about creating is your application development and you create what what is this for native hana development you create what access project and then under this project you start creating all the objects relevant for native hana development so like go data services or or ui5 applications or whatever it is yeah. so this will be your hana native development perspective and now if you get into bw modeling perspective again this will be more relevant when you working on bw on hana So you want to work with some BW objects. 
which can be modeled only into Eclipse tool. Then you basically use this BW modeling perspective. Let's say you got BW sitting on top of HANA and when you want to work explicitly with some BW components like say advanced uh, DSO or open ODS view composite providers, then you have to explicitly use this BW modeling tools which is in Eclipse. <coughs> Here you basically, you, when you say drop down and even if, what is this here? In this BW modeling tools, you will be creating what? BW project. And you basically map it to any of your BW system which is available in your logon pad. And then you say next. And then so. And then you create this project. See, look at this. I have a checkbox which says attach SAP ANA system. So when I'm creating my project for BW, if I enable the attach ANA system, I will be able to consume both HANA models and BW info products together when I'm creating my composite products. So I can use all HANA models also. So this is my system which I want to use. So this is my BW project. When I expand, basically you get to see all the info providers which are, see now you're seeing HANA library also which will show you when you say content, you will see all your packages and models. So I can use my models, like your attribute analytical calculations can be used. And if you go to info products, I get to see all my info area. And I get to see all different types of objects, like say advanced DSO or composite providers or info cubes, all of this can be done. But majorly when you when you prefer to deal with the uh, info products which are specific to HANA modeling, like your advanced DSO composite provider, open ODSV, we prefer this BW, BW modeling tools. Yeah, say if I, <coughs> let's say I go with composite provider. Yes, I'm just, uh, say something like union. If I go to the sinner and then if I say add, I would see now I can include info provider as well as what? HANA. So I can combine HANA models and BW info products together in creating my composite products, which is similar to your multi products. I am able to use this HANA views because while creating my BW project, I have attached HANA system towards that. Okay. Even after attaching, later you can, even if, while creating product, let's say you have not attached, you can, later you can always attach and detach. We are rightly. Uh, we can remove HANA system and we can also uh, always connect HANA system to this project also. And upper parallel, what's it? And then we can also straight away see SAP log UI screen from here also. If you just log in, and I want this BW system to be connected, I can just straight away look at normal here. Same like how you work in with SAP UI, you can get the entire UI within your BW modeling tools. And normal activities of creating a cubes, all this can be done from here. But pretty much, see composite product load and don't local HANA based. When you want to create HANA based composite product, I'll explicitly have to use HANA modeling tools. If you create composite from here, this will be local composite product. So if you go to RS Limo and create, that is a local, local composite product. We're not dealing with that. We'll mainly deal with HANA based composite provider. <coughs> HCMP area. Yeah. You're okay with this? That's it. Same way. Uh, I can say log off. I can just log off on our system and say close this project. Or close this project also. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, here in uh, Hana Studio, we try to create one composite provider, right? Yeah. So, will that get reflected in BW system or? Yeah. What are the composite product you create in on a BW modeling tool or advanced DSO, whatever it is, you can see that in normal RS. For example, if I go in RS seven. Yeah. He asked me if I create that in the BW modeling tools in Eclipse, will I be able to see that in normal B yes. If you go to QX8. See, previously we had created composite products. I can see that composite provider and uh, advanced. This is an advanced DSO. So you get to see them, but only things you will not be able to edit them. Modeling and editing is all should be done in BW modeling tools in Eclipse based. 
that's why so when you're working with bw hana you could have gui as well as uh, hana studio with bw modeling tools enabled when you're working on bw hana because if you have to create hana based composite products you have to explicitly get into bw modeling tools of hana, eclipse course. and then okay. yeah then you have uh, another perspective called abab perspectives now we use this perspective when you want to work on abab development with respect to eclipse okay so abab when you say abab development doesn't mean only ecc it could be any sap because every in sc in every sap application you can you have abab application server you can implement your abab program right? it could be bw crm ecc whatever it is so what it is when you basically create now here when you say what is it you create you create an abab project in this abab project could be of ecc or B, depending on you, you would like to do an abab development of which sap system whether it is bw in, even in bw you can write your executable program you can write your bad is bad piece function model everything can be implemented because it's got entire abab stack right that's how it is so you just choose the system in which you would like to do your abab development let's say i would like to work on abab in bw system then what i'll do i'll create my abab project is connecting to which system the bw system and say next and then so this is my project connected and i will expand this then here see in case of bw project all the providers are organized with info i suppose here you'll have all the objects organized with package here you see dollar tmp but there are lots of packages you have you can create any package So I've got package like BNR and then I just want to create some objects under this. Right click, say new. You can create ABAP class, ABAP program, ABAP interface. Even if you go to others, the lot, you can create the entire dictionary also from here. Like whatever you create from SC11. I can create my data, dic, database table, data element, and then uh, domain, lock object, uh, anything, structure, table type, everything can be created from here. If you go to others, You'll also lot have lots of objects here. I can create a functions, then transport container. We'll see that. Yeah, you can see, you can in source library you can create a ABAP class, function group, function model, include program, interface, ABAP program. All this can be developed from here also. <coughs> so that will be your your ABAP perspective. Yeah? Okay, boss. <clears throat> Let me and next we have another perspective called HANA Administration Console. This will be majorly for administrators, like who, who are dealing with the server configurations. They use this perspective. Now, the, like they just get connected. So basically, they use this icon here. What is this? Administration. They get. <clears throat> Now, when you get into this, you would see this complete server configurations can be maintained from here. You can see the overview, which tells you what was the um, operation schedule, is all, all the services are started or not. Then you can see the version, uh, which version, what is it, and it, what is the OS here. Your HANA server is built on this uh, SUSE Linux. And you can just click on this and see what all the different plugins have been installed, like different patches, what, what has been installed on this. You can see hard, what was the hardware is Dell and that's okay. And this is your version, this is version of your HANA Studio. What is it? It says 96, <coughs> it'll have revision, uh, 96 revision. Mm -hmm. For server it'll be SP9, SP10, SP, but for Studio it'll be revision, 96 revision, 106 revision and that. And you can see how much of the main memory has been used and then how much of the CPU usage is there. Like in the host, what is, this is about disk, okay, the two things here, see, data volume and what is here, log volume. This will tell you data volume, what, how much has been occupied and how much of space has been occupied in log volume, yeah, this is for tracing, yeah. You just click this for more information again, detail. And you also get some alerts, if there's some alerts should be seen on the screen, okay. Then in the landscape, you get to see complete servers here. You remember, you see, there's something, what is this here? Index server, then UCN, what is this here? Access engine server and um, 
main next would be a deep data processing server which will be i told you about smart data access if you have to enable that smart data access we need to have this uh, data provisioning server enabled then we need to have access engine for deployment of your all your native hana applications index server for all your complete database and pre processor server for all the unstructured data processing like you have all the servers here in the real time <coughs> so how many index servers do i see only one this is, so this is a single node in, installation bus so in the real time you can have cluster or multi node installation if you have multi node installation so you will see multi, multiple index servers simple was even in, in sap applications when you go to sm51 do you see multiple application servers sometimes you see only one so when you say multiple application servers means what it's a cluster a cluster of multiple servers together as one server same way if you have multiple servers together as group then you will see multiple index servers here you can see i here you can see the host this is my host name is sap cubex and it's all active that's my master so if you're going with the cluster you have one master and multiple slaves and a three four system if i need to group three four system together as one hana server you have one master node and you have three slaves together you have as one hana server and from from master you will get index server and from slaves also you get index servers and you have multiple index servers and then you, this is for alerts then you have performance points about like uh, where is it can, which in which session like which port which service is taking more of connect how many connections are there what is the performance threading you can get lots of things here a sql tracing so you run a sql uh, sql statement and you can see detailed information about each sql statement see how much time it has been taking what is complete query format in the back end can do tracing this will be for big sql statement which is taking a lot of time you can see the pro job see in you know in uh, modeler also you can see job progress here also you can see job progress or you can see the load of the system uh what is the load so if you want to really understand at what point of the system is been heavily loaded okay you can see the loading load on the system and then volumes is about space again um you have this all the ports and uh, this is mine very important if you see that index server you will see your data and then the sizing here also you can see the complete size occupied my data volume or what log volumes uh, then it, this one is really really important configurations this is what mainly and majority of the case the administrator works on this particular tab here <coughs> so i was telling you about there is something like save point so where is this specify by what time the entire data should be written from main memory to the disk if i just go say save, save the, mm, see I, there is something like save point intervals there is some uh, some values being made as 300 seconds save point interval seconds 300 300 seconds and obviously 5 minutes 5 minutes that's how they configure things and i told you there is something called auto merge right uh, when you say art and even for auto merge i said there is something called decision function you have i said if there is a table which is enabled for auto merge you have process called merge dog which will be scanning through all the tables whenever it satisfies a um, auto merge decision function it triggers at auto merge so where do i i can see that here right we say merge dog see i see this is a merge dog for all the merge dog they would have set up the properties here see auto merge uh, what is it? decision function and they maintain some formula here um dm where dms is greater than pal and dcc so on so but i'll tell you where to understand all this dms is like uh, delta memory storage if delta memory storage is greater than pl by 2000 if dcc is like delta cell count if in the delta storage the cell count is greater than 100 they, they would, you can also they you can alter this okay you can this is right click and say me to do but when you say change you can specify a new value new formula for this also and then save it so that it replaces that okay and you'll also have something called smart merge i will discuss but see for smart merge also you'll have what is here auto merge ki smart merge ki emante in case of auto merge system will trigger the merging automatically but whether merging should be performed or not depends on what auto merge decision function and smart merge is i would manually trigger the merging on the table but 
whenever i trigger merging it's not trigger it should i trigger the merging process but actually merging is done only when this condition is satisfied that is called a smart merge auto merge system will fire the merging on the table whenever this auto merge decision function is satisfied now when i say smart merge Uh, system there is auto merge is disabled i would trigger merging saying perform merge with param, uh, parameter is smart merge and so manually i'm initiating the token saying perform merging but it actually does merging only if hmm, the smart merge decision fun function right <coughs> is satisfied sir so, huh? that is smart merge but irrespective of the condition if you want merging to be happen then i'll say force to merge at all When I say, when I say uh, parameter is forced merge, system will perform the merging on the table irrespective of checking any criteria. When I manually trigger merge, I okay. should check some condition and then do merging. That is smart, smart merge. Okay. Yeah. What? Can you please repeat it? Uh, auto and smart merge. See, when uh, I say auto merge, repeat an example. If exactly. Say, let's say we have a table. See, I'll get into details. I'm just showing you that there are settings here. I'll get into details. Okay, but when you say auto merge, let's say you created a table. On top of this table, you have enabled auto merge boss. Okay, so when 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 auto merge is enabled on the table, what happens? You are not responsible of performing merging at all. So within the system, you have a process called what is this here? Within this index server, index server, you have a component called merge dog, which will be scanning through all the tables. whenever any table satisfies this criteria auto merge decision function with this formula we never it satisfies it triggers merging on the table that is auto merge which is taken care automatically by the system okay let's say we have must mute yourself please let's say you have disabled auto merge on the table so system is now we responsible for merging performing merging on the table so we have to trigger it perform the delta merging manually bus now within the manual within this manual actions of merging there are multiple types like forced merge hard merge then smart merge and other so within that when it is smart merge you will issue the token to the system to do merging whenever you want but it actually performs merging if this smart merge decision function is satisfied no manual ga smart merge ni trigger chesina smart smart merge ni manual triggering system ga no trigger chestu no token is ante merging cheyandani kani merging eppudu chestundi ee criteria satisfy ayina appude merging chestundi that is smart merge. okay manual trigging manual trigger lo ne three types of uh, merging untai manual merging so ha ah, ha ah, four untai okay, okay. Art merge, four smart merge smart merge okay auto ite system generated force merge vachu manual ga cheyali स्मार्ट मर्ज जो मैनुअल से आली या फोर्स मर्ज जो स्मार्ट मर्ज जो क्रिटिकल मर्ज अन्य वाव मैनुअल मैनुअल इंटरवेंशन इस नहीं है पर स्मार्ट मर्ज यू विल टोकन मैनुअली बट सिस्टम विल परफॉर्म यू नो डिपेंड्स ऑन दिस क्राइटेरिया बस कंडीशन ओके ओके गॉट इट गॉट इट यू वांट द मर्जिंग टू बी डन इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ एनी क्राइटेरिया नो नो चेकिंग एनी क्राइटेरिया देन यू विल से फोर्स टू मर्ज अन you'll always say perform merging on this table parameter is smart merge the parameter is four then we perform yeah don't worry on this and then if you see you have a server called what is it access engine uh, access engine lo uh, i told you uh, access engine is what it's an application server you can deploy your applications on top of it let's say you want to let's say there is an, a program which has been built you want to deploy it on top of it then you can say right click change you can list out all the programs which should be running on this this was the uh, active value i i have added my own you just have to separate with comma then keep adding n number of programs which has to be running on your uh, access engine so what they have done is they have given some program relevant for what dx i told you that dx is one of the mechanism for etl we have slt po ds dx is one of the mechanism to enable the extraction for dx sap has given some program which which has to run on which has to be run on access engine bus so i have enabled this program to run on this engine so what happens let's just look at this um so mainly you should deal with index server right and then you deal with uh, access engine these are the main two servers you mainly deal with always when you working in so index server will maintain the database 
and excess engine is the application server where you will deploy your applications on top of yeah now and this servers will have a port first each of the servers will have a port index server will have a port excess engine will have a separate port generally when you install this on a cloud we should tell them which port they have to open okay now how do you do see now when you see the system look at this what is system id there sp9 what is server name there sap cubix and what is instance number there 01 is the instance number okay if instance number is 01 my index server port will be 3 xx15 this xx is nothing but your instance number what is the instance it's not always 3 double zero one five three and the next two numbers would be your instance number and one five so it will be what three zero one one five this will be a port for what index server again same way for xs engine will have its own port where this uh, this server is running in then 80xx and xx again is nothing but instance number it's not always 8000 80 and then what? Uh, XX is the inst what is the instance number? 01. So it will be 8001 is your XS index. Clear on this? If you want to make sure whether my index, since I am not able to connect to the HANA system, then it means index server is up and running. But if you want to check whether your XS engine is up and running, you can check into the browser. If I just go on to the browser, I can say, What is the server name? SAP uh, Cubix. SAP Cubix colon. Which port do you want to deal with? You want to deal with XS engine, right? So what will you say? Uh, 80, uh, 0, uh, This, what did it say? My XS engine is what? Up and running. My XS engine is up and running. Now, on top of this application, on top of this XS engine, I can deploy my own applications first. So there was there is one application which I have deployed. If you look at this, as these are the different application list, application list which stay, which are running on XS engine. There is something lib XS DX. This is relevant to direct extraction. Okay. So I want to see whether that program is running on this or not. I'll say our program will have path where it is set up. Um, it will be in SAP. First time, hmm. I know this program is implemented here, uh, SAP, HANA, then what, uh, have, what is, under the DXC you will have the program actually, so what I will do, hmm. so within the server on XS engine, I will have to run the program in the path SAP uh, slash uh, HANA uh, slash, then what is it, hmm. DXC, under the DXC, my program name is DX underscore XSC function. If I say, okay, user ID is password. It says what? SAP and a direct extraction. The service is up and running. We will see that later. But I just wanted to show you what is XS engine. What does it mean? The application running on that engine and in the table. So you can, here you can specify the uh, entire application list which are supposed to run on what? The XS engine. Okay, then. let's let's say tomorrow. Uh, let's see. You can also so you have Design Studio, right? Which is a front-end uh, design tool. We can deploy Design Studio server on XS Engine. And what are the applications you design in Design Studio? You can publish it onto uh, Design Studio server, which is running on XS Engine. And you don't need BO portal. <coughs> I have my own launchpad in within XS Engine where users can start running from there. To use Design Studio, I don't need BO Enterprise. I don't need Launchpad because I, I can I can either install Design Studio server with BO platform or with NetWare BW or with HANA also. So when I say with HANA, I'm going to install the Design Studio server and play make it to run on what XS Engine. Even Lumira server, I can make my Lumira server integrated in, on XS Engine bus. Lumira and Design Studio will be a open tools whether you can integrate them with Business Objects Enterprise or you can integrate them with HANA or you can integrate them with BW, anything you want. Okay, boss? Yeah. <coughs> so basically like this, the majority of the configurations are done here. Either click the 
So measured with the configurations by the administrator would be done here. And no one would remember which path, where they have to go in, what they do. For everything, there will be complete documentation available. Let's say I want to enable access engine. You'll have a PDF document for it, which tells you go to configuration, expand this, expand this, expand this, select this, right click and enabling is very simple. You just get in, you'll have a First, I need to enable access engine, right? Mm. See, you'll have main server as demon. Actually, when you basically switch on the server, first the demon server starts up, and then this will take care of starting all other servers, index server, all this. So this will have the major, this will have the main linking, which all the servers are being active. Then, so it knows that. So then, that that, that starts triggering all other servers from there. So if I get him, the into access engine only, there's some instant security. default value is 0 on my mate is 1 so what in the demand I, I need to tell them there is an excess engine being active so that the demand will start even the excess engine so in the in, in what I'm doing in the demand dot ini configuration files I'm getting into excess engine instance right click by default it will be 0 I, I have changed it to 1 it means I'm enabling the excess engine instance so that's how we are switching on the excess engine bus. They'll do lots of configurations in this majorly, yeah. and we'll have we can see the system in uh, this. Chala important, it is much important. See, I told you, uh, even every see any application or any database will have metadata, right? There'll be some standard table or repository tables. There'll be some standard tables in the backend which will store majority of the metadata, right? So. In the system information, what they've done is instead of you going to different table and trying to see the content and instead of you going into system table and trying to see the information, they've given you those tables here straight away. For example, uh, there'll be something like restrictions. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I can see, look at this, used memory by tables, if I just say right click and say what, uh, execute, I can see that information, this is more like, um, it tells you to, total used storage of by, by column tables so much and what. For row store, it has used so much of memory, and for a column store, it has used so much of memory. It's more like running some queries and seeing some on tables. And you want to see detail analysis on delta merging. Okay, if I just right click and say execute. Okay, it was some. So. If you want distinct values. You can see all this database information I want to see. System ID is P9, host is this, so and so, and then usage is customer. And you can see overall system information from you. You can see all the sessions which has been active, schema size of loaded tables. For each schema, I want to see the table size. There's one more which we suppose uh, Actually, there is some restriction. I told you one table size is max 2 TB. There are some restrictions. There, there was one view which actually gives you that detailed restrictions. Each table can have only two TB. Let's say you're building a table name. What is the length of a table name? Technical name of the table max is 72 characters. Uh, table marks. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get that done. Like this, you can get to see system information from here. And then your diagnosis files in the first you if you if you with the help of trace configuration we can switch on the trace. You can have SQL trace or user specific or database trace performance, any any tracing you do. It actually creates the uh, tracing files and those tracing files can be seen from diagnostic files. You'll get dot TRC files which can we can open and see this. You can basically look at the tracing and find out the tracing of the cell. Say you have a select statement. You want to switch on the tracing, you can switch on what? 
can switch on your tracing in from the face configurations and what are the traces been found i can see those dot trc is a um, tracing files i can open the tracing files and see them. but generally they are not preferring tracing because um, this tracing files are really occupying a lot of space they are really huge no data 1 gb the tracing to 3 gb so that's the problem but my actor control and real time Mm, depends <clears throat> depends on the project also but if you're working with, with a big customer you will not have access if you're working with small customer you'll have entire access that's how it is yeah? but generally at least they'll give you access to switching on the trace and look at the trace at least. see within this administration they can block only some tabs to be working on they can control that way also they might give you only this tracing uh, options they will not give you this step 100% okay they will try to give you this yeah and overview they will might give you yeah. so like this uh, so mainly they do administration from that point perspective from there mm. you'll have some more uh, like very important girl but you'll have something like uh, plan visualizations um, this will tell let's say this is also important sometimes say you have you create an hana model like say attribute view article view or calculation view you would like to see the execution strategy of that view in a graphical mode and you want to like to see runtime at each phase of it then i can use this um, plan visualization which will show me more graphically and tells me what all operations are going done and what is the time, time taken by each operation and which engines are used in each operation. We can, that's how we can use this. I'll show you. Mm, say for example, I will write some select. Okay, I have some, uh, this is actually some calculation, this is a, can I say, I told yesterday runtime objects will be in Sysbig schema, so I am just trying to fire a query on the runtime object and then I want to see the graphical execution of almost what is happening in this view. If I say right click and what is this here, visualize plan or you can go to the perspective plan visualization, it's all same. See, I am in which perspective now, model right, so it will automatically take me to that, uh, now it is automatically taken me to which perspective you look at this SAP HANA or uh, plan visualization so now you can see the complete plan. so there is complete operation done and it is giving out me what quarter and rows hmm. let me expand let me expand this and tell me there is a that was a simple view where it is reading data from table and then projecting certain columns and then giving me quarter and records but I would like to see runtime statistic this is a design flow um, a definition for me. We so right click on this and say what? Uh, I can say execute and display results also, but I just want to execute this. <coughs> now, now it has executed this. Now it is basically showing me complete runtime. If I go to execute a plan, then I can get in inside this. Execute this. Hmm. You can get it very detailed till the ta reading data from the table. So. For, so you can, here you can see, you see some saying JE, you see some operation like JE, J indicates it is using join engine. If you see an operation starting with BW, it means it is using OLAP engine. If you see an operation starting with CE, it means it is using calculus engine. Okay. Then you know about timing, what is taken, how much seconds it has been taken in each. This is the query. So the you will see the time taken at each phase. Now. And you know how many records have been brought. Then no A select just it, then but the operations highlighted them. What operations have been taken care in each of this. So like this, we can basically use the plan visualizations also to see graphical understanding of entire. Thing.
Okay, was <clears throat> so like this. You'll have lots of uh, different perspectives in Eclipse, and you be, be depending on what kind of activity you're working on. Whether you're working on uh, on Eclipse tool with relevant to BW or relevant to ABAP or native development or on a modeler, depending on each one, will have different perspectives, and, and every perspective will have different views. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for now, uh, uh, sir, I have a question regarding uh, ABAP perspective. Yeah. So suppose if I created a function module uh, using that perspective, can I call that function module again in the BW system? Yeah, yeah, you can call. Yeah. See, you if you're if you're creating the uh, function model in ABAP perspective, it means you will be able to see that in SC thirty seven. Okay. So if I go okay. to ABAP same like BW, if I go to ABAP project and create a function model in HANA based Eclipse tool, I'll be able to see that in SC thirty seven. No issues. Your class anything? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and whatever we have created in the BW system, can we use it here in the above? You can, you can use. Let's say I created in a function module. I, I created a cube or TSO in BW. If I want to use them in creating composite flow, I can use. Let's say create a function model in in SC thirty seven. I can use that function model in another another program where I can say call function of that. I can do that. Yeah. Okay, and basically the code which you write is you cannot edit that. That's the point. Okay. You can't. Okay, we can't edit that. Okay. Okay. And one last question. And <coughs> whatever the code we write using this ABAP perspective. Sorry, why is this breaking? What is the code you write using ABAP perspective? Uh, will that code be executed? Hmm. The ABAP server. Yeah, yeah. You can execute this. <coughs> Say for. Uh, See what are the code you write. If writing, if you write with scripting, then it will push down the logic and it will execute that program in uh, database server. If you're writing with normal app, it does not make any difference. It will always execute whether you write program in Eclipse modeling tool or whether in SC thirty seven or SC thirty it executes in app server. Okay. Okay, so even in ABAP perspective, you, we can uh, differentiate between that whether we want to execute the yeah. code in ABAP server or we ca we want to execute the code at the database level. In I mean, but if you're writing with ABAP, it executes with ABAP server. If you're writing with scripting, it uses database server. That's, but you differentiate like this. Eh? You have to explicitly indicate that. Okay. See here, I have explicitly indicated this method. If you go into this method, I explicitly indicate this method to be database procedure for HANA database HDB. Then okay. it understands the code what I write inside this method as scripting. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, okay. generally it understands as normal ABAP and executes in ABAP server. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So, and then my question actually, ABAP perspective, lo, mere rasa ita puru. Output would have made it indicate Chayala separate ga, like I mean it should be executed in the database. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. Okay, okay. Whatever I was the whatever the, the what are the class I was showing here, this was actually created from uh ABA perspective in Eclipse only. Okay, okay. So ABAP pers ABAP perspective in Chikura, normal garachu, Mali again database server will execute Ella and it will ante. Ante. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> now what I want to do is I just want to take a simple uh, Okay. Boss. So we answer about we we had different perspectives. So initially what we're trying to do is we're trying to go with Anna as data warehouse. Or HANA is data model, or some people call it as enterprise HANA. Or more for HANA modeling and database. This is what we are trying to focus on. So once you are good with this, you know about HANA, then we can go with any combination. BW HANA, ECC HANA, HANA native development, anything you can get in here. So for now what I'm trying to do is I just want to un make you understand the complete cycle how it works out. I'm not teaching anything. I'm not teaching you anything. I just want to show you 
because we said what it will have we'll use etl and then put all the data into what uh, into data warehouse and then on top of it we do what reporting right so i would like to take some data in some source um, extract this data and then put into my uh, hana warehouse and then on top of this i would like to create my virtual model and then I, I would like to use this virtual model for reporting so then you know the complete cycle how how does it go on just i'm not teaching you anything on this how how to create the model just showing you how that the complete cycle goes on so then we can get hold of each of these topics separately etl warehouse and then reporting okay just to under, make you understand the complete cycle we just trying to do some simple example and then do it yeah <coughs> I'm just looking at I have sales customer I don't have customer data. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me use this sales orders. Okay, then Yeah. <clears throat> mm, sales orders about um, customer product. The contract. Mm. This is contract type. Sales or okay, was <clears throat> okay. Now let's take this scenario was <clears throat> first try to understand the data, then we'll. So then we'll understand how is my data structure. Then we can discuss on how, how, what is the joints I'm doing and how is the reporting. Okay. So majorly I would like to do reporting on this here. Mm -hmm. What is this here? Sales orders. Now just try to understand I've got some sales order ID and then I've got each record is one particular sales order for me. And I've got customer data. Then I've got what? See, it tells me for this sales order who is a corresponding customer, who, is, who plays an order and for which product and what is the quantity and unit of measure of the quantity and this is the contract contract document and then I got nomination actually what happens is um, my cycle I'll have a contract with the customer so based on the contract depending on the requirement the customer will nominate what he wants then based on the nomination my sales order would be created so actually nomination is 
uh, customer enters into an agreement with the company saying uh, from first day of the year till December every month you have to deliver me 100, 100, 100 liters of petrol or 100, 100 kgs of some stock okay that is agreement let's say on every fifth day of a month but before fifth day because sometimes the requirement keeps changing right so before fifth day on third day of a month customer has to nominate himself okay he month can have 90 jalo. he nominates himself how much he wants so based on that nomination we have we have we'll have a sales order then the, then the based on the sales order will have subsequent delivery is done we'll have delivery document goods issue is done and then billing is done okay so my sequence is i've got contract number so for a given contract, I have a nomination document filed by the customer and against this nomination, we'll have a sales order. For a particular sales order, we'll have delivery document and then we'll have goods, is, goods issue, then billing, it gets into invoicing, okay. So my, this example is only till what, contract and nomination to a sales order, okay. Mm, now look at this. Now sales order tells me to which contract date it does it belong and to which nomination does it belong and what is the delivery date and is in a new format and the SAV format like Petkuna that date don't go and then don't worry on this now uh, what is what we'll discuss on this later for now I just have this data okay <coughs> now so I've got customer column from this if I can join to the customer table will, will that give me customer details so I've got I've got another file See, the, you're seeing it as Excel files, but we'll be loading from different sources. But the same data I'll be placing in one in SQL Server, one in ECC, one in flat file. We'll see different sources. But then I just, if I open this file, customer data. Now, for a given customer, I can know this first name, last name, title, gender, country, code, the phone number and mobile number and then email ID and all those. Okay. And here it's very important that um, I also get to know this customer belongs to which sales organizations from this table I also can get to know that this customer belongs to what uh, which sales are this also tell me type of customer what I'm doing I've done my customer segmentation <laughs> saying he is an exceptional customer he is an essential customer exceptional to what he is ready to pay more money for the service essential to what to do so that's how I, I categorize the customer so I've got a data like customer master data like this okay now from the sales, once from a sales order, I know the customer and if I go to the customer master, can I get the details of that customer, which type, to which sales order does it belong and all the stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a file called another another table. See, understand each file is one table was in the database, okay. I've got another table called sales or. Now here, for a, for a given sales org ID, I can know which country, which region and which city was. You remember the link now, I've got sales order table which tells me this sales order was performed by which customer, raised by which customer. From there, if I get into customer table, I get to see details of the customers along with to which sales order does it belong. From there, if I jump to another, if I want to see detail, from there, if I jump into sales order table, then I can get to see to which country or which city or which region does this, does this customer belong. Okay, so understand each file is a one separate table, okay. Mm -hmm. Next, what I want is similar way, from sales orders, I get to see to which product does it sales order belong to. So I have another table which gives me product details. Yeah. This tells me product ID and name of the product and then product category. Then I've got price of the product and then the dollars, like the price currency. Of it. Okay, so this is my product master database. Yeah. <clears throat> Same way, now I've got sales orders, right? For given sales order, does it belong to one contract? Yes sir, does it belong to one contract number here? It tells under preceding document. I have a contract against this contract in the end number of sales orders because my I create a contract saying the contract is valid for one year. And every month I must do a delivery. So I will I have 12 sales orders first. So one contract can have multiple yeah. sales orders. Yeah. So, yeah, one, two. Yeah, yeah. So now this tells me, let's see if we look at this filter. Uh, I get in, I get to take a contract 9001 this will have what there are three orders which are performed against this contract so now from a sales order point of view I know to which contract does this order belong to as a reference document as a pressing document 
now i have another table which gives me detailed information about the contract There are two names. It's a contact mask data. Sorry, this is a different. This is my contact table which tells me this is a contract. I just want to implement simple logic. But here what is done? Uh, the contract ID combines both the contract number and the sales org. So while in the ETL while we are extracting and loading into HANA database, I will have to split this contact number into separate because the contact number holds the actual contract number and the sales org number together. So I will have to differentiate that while I am bringing in. Then I have start date and end date of the contract and I have the sales executive who has entered into this contract from my, from my company who was a sales executive who was representing this deal. Yeah? And then volume, uh, let's not, okay. We'll have something on contract wall. What is the total quantity of that contract? And from first day of the year till let's say the contract is valid for 12 months. In the entire 12 months, how much volume should I supply him? The contract volume. Yeah? For example, say um, you see this contract uh, from Jan 1st, 2013, it is valid till December 31st. Means the contract valid is, is for what? One year. And the total volume is expected is 18,075 is the volume. And the unit is we have it here. And okay, that is fine. And then I told you my customer has there will be an agreement. So contract will have all agreement details saying my and, and I told you every for every every month of a contract the customer has to nominate on which day of month he has to nominate. Say on the sixth day of a month or fifth day of a month or twentieth day of a month, he has to nominate. And then delivery day. If he nominates by twentieth, I must deliver it by twenty first day. That's the agreement on that. Contract will have all the agreement details. So customer has to nominate on this particular day, I must deliver, see he nominates third year, I must deliver it on sixth day of him. And this, one second, one second. And this will be, uh, say I told you, for the entire year it is 18, 1875, but every month he has to nominate how much stock he needs, right? But what are the nomination volume, now whatever he nominates, it must be between this range only. Minimum it is 10, max it is this. The overall year contract, I'm going to supply him 1875, but doesn't mean that he can ask me all 1875 in one month. So there'll be an agreement saying every month, monthly nomination volume minimum is 10, max he cannot, is 125, we can't go beyond 125. We'll have agreement. Is, what was it? You said? Hmm. Hmm, partial, right? Every month partial. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll have something called contract type, which tells you what type of contract, whether we'll have short term contracts, long term. Uh, what is that I'm doing? If I, if I see that if my contract is more than six months, every company will have their own definition. If it's more than six months, it is long term. So for me, one indicates something and zero indicates something. And how do I know what does zero indicate? What does one indicate? There are another table which is telling me zero indicates what short term and one indicates what long term for me. Okay. So I still have, and then I also have the sales org which it belongs, who was a customer who was, uh, this contract was built with for which product. And there are some five entries, which is, and if you understand, it's okay. There's something LTFTL, okay. LTFTL indicates less than full truck load. Because say, my customer is really important and is ordering me for 100 liters of petrol. So even, even though my truck capacity is 10,000 liters, I still deliver those 100 liters with those big tanks. But I am wasting a lot of uh, resources there. Uh, so, so in the agreement, I am going to maintain saying, okay, for this customer, am I going to agree for less than full truck load or not? So this will tell me no, no, no. Could it guess? But customer got a double enter bar and a gear and a cut down guess. But you don't go. No. So that's what is done. What they will do is they will say, they will do customer segmentation, who is exceptional, who is essential. Based on the customer segmentation, you will have different offers available. Yeah, that's how it is. At the LMC, last minute changes. Whether can he, at last minute, can he change the order quantity? Say, suddenly he calls you, I actually ordered you for 120, but urgently I need it for 140. So can he change order like that? So, what exception like that? What last came out, you want to go, extra 20, 
ఒక్కొక్క లీటర్ థౌజండ్ రూపీస్ అంటాం పర్లే పంపే అట్టటువంటి ఎక్సెప్షన్ అన్నట్టు అయితే వద్దు లేనటువంటి ఎసెన్షియల్ అంటే సో మెదర్ ఆర్ వి యాక్సెప్టింగ్ లాస్ట్ మినిట్ చేంజెస్ విత్ దిస్ సో ఇన్ ద కాంట్రాక్ట్ ఐ గాట్ అన్ అగ్రిమెంట్ రైట్ దట్ ఇస్ అన్ అగ్రిమెంట్ సో వాట్ వాట్ ఇస్ వాట్ ఇస్ అగ్రీడ్ ఐమ్ గోట్ హ్యావ్ ఇట్ ఇన్ ద కాంట్రాక్ట్ సో ఫర్ దిస్ కాంట్రాక్ట్ లాస్ట్ మినిట్ చేంజెస్ ఆర్ యాక్సెప్టెడ్ ఈ కెన్ సో ద కస్టమర్ కెన్ బేసికలీ చేంజ్ ది ఆర్డర్ క్వాంటిటీ ఆఫ్ ద లాస్ట్ మినిట్ దెన్ ఇయర్ ఆన్ ఇయర్ వాల్యూమ్ గ్రోత్ సపోజ్ if my contract is for 3 years i said there is some contract volume which is fixed uh, like 1875 the entire contract but if my contract is for let's say 3 years was he can can he increase the volume yearly year on year was say for first year he will say 1000 but second year can he increase it by 2 and 2 2300 can he yes sir no that is what year on year volume work ot is on time delivery commitment are we committing for on time delivery because if it is an exceptional customer i would commit saying yes at any cost i'll deliver on time delivery same thing monthly volume optionality you understand this otdc on time delivery commitment and then mt mt view i'll say monthly volume optionality same this see overall let's say my contract is for 12 months my overall contract volume is 1200 what does it mean actually every month it will be 100 100 plus but can can my customer change those quantities can he nominate say in one month he nominates 200 in other in another month he nominates only 10 in another month he nominates 190 can he do yes can, does he have the flexibility of changing those monthly volumes monthly volume optionality yes mm-hmm. and rush order now rush order ante sometimes see it is agreed that there is some nomination day there is some delivery day means customer has to nominate initial saying on every third day of a month i want so much and every sixth day of a month we will be delivering but sometimes it happens that customers are not able to plan they suddenly call you and say i want it delivery by now that is called as rush order so in the contract i'm getting an agreement saying am i accepting a rush order for this particular customer or not for this contract of agreement between my customer and me and, and the company are we accepting rush order yes or no is what we have it. okay was fine <coughs> like this i have all my tables nominations kuda undi oddu antha oddu le was so we have all those data so now i just want to bring in the, we have certain reporting requirements mm. for which we have to extract all these tables from different sources and bring into on our database and do modeling on top of it and then create some reports so with that you understand the overall cycle i'm not teaching you about how to do modeling how to extract i'm only showing you cinema ante ure detail etla jarugutundi etla pedutunnam etla view jarugutundi screen la alavad jaye kantor i'm not teaching you anything now okay boss mm-hmm. okay boss so what i'll do i'll send out this files to you today because before when i'm doing modeling or when i'm doing detail you should know complete you should have complete grip on those data also. if you're really strong with the data then you can be really good at modeling this so i'll stop it here for today tomorrow i'm going to send you those files just go through all the data in it and then understand the relation between those so tomorrow it helps you for modeling this. so by tomorrow what i'll do i'll place one of the table in sql server database i'll place one of the table in another hana database i'll place one of the table in ecs application I'll, so that you will see how do we bring data from different systems into um, hana database and see how do how do i leverage them for modeling and create simple model and then how do i create some report on that with the so overall cycle you'll understand with hana native hana or sorry enterprise hana or hana modeling or etl sir uh, i have a question once okay yeah mm, yeah tell me make sure you give your mail id uh, to pawan or someone so they can send you and even people who have logged in online please uh, give your email id to them yeah? yeah tell me what is your question uh, tomorrow is an all day so can we have a three hour session instead of saturday tomorrow Because is a it's a long weekend holy good friday, good friday. Good friday. Oh, yeah. we can do that so tomorrow let's have class for 3 hours and then let's keep on saturday yeah, that is better we we'll let's free, get free on saturday okay em meek ledu hello hello okay 
Okay, that will do. We'll do. Any of you want to see the case study, right? It will take some time. So, if we full stretch, full stretch, uh, we can see the complete cycle tomorrow. Yeah, that is better. Yeah. Okay. What's up? डेट समझो कल बात करेंगे प्राइमर की बात ये ना ये ना हेलो या ये टेल मी या या यू टोल इन द टुडे क्लास नाबा प्रस्पेक्टिव कैन राइट द कोड इन नाबा प्राइट इन नॉट नाबा प्रस्पेक्टिव यस यस वन वन सेकंड एवरीवन इज लीविंग हियर लेट मी ओके देयर इज नाइस लेट देम लीव देन वी टॉक वन सेकंड ओके थैंक यू या Yeah, tell me. Yeah, Napa perspective can write Napa. Okay. Yeah. So that that code or entire logic will work on application server or in database server. That also we can define in Napa perspective how it will work. See, generally when you when you writing, it's a normal it will be Napa server only. But when you writing for okay. logic specific to Hana, you will declare it explicitly. This block has to get connected because normally. It's like okay. game, like how you deal with any other database. First of all, you get connected to the database, right? You get data yes. connection. You write native HANA and sorry, native SQL statement. Then that gets connected. That executes in database. Okay. Same way, you can write a stored procedure from a web. You just call that stored procedure. You can write like that also. Then whatever is written so on that logic and okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that logic you need to work on database itself, or uh, it work on uh, application server. That is my question. So the stored procedure will work on database server, but whatever is written in ABAP, it will execute in ABAP server. ABAP server will trigger the code initially, then wherever okay. the blocks of scripting, it will get into database server. That's what it is. So basically, ABAP will okay. take wrapper. Mm -hmm. so ABAP server will in initiate the program, but actual logic it will okay. be fired from the uh, database server. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow we have a class. Yeah, tomorrow we have class from seven to ten. Yeah. Okay. And on Saturday? We'll relax on Saturday because we'll spend three hours tomorrow, right? We'll relax on that. And and the, then is, there, there will be class on Sunday, right? No, no class. We'll be class on Monday again. Tomorrow we'll have class. Okay. Next class will be on Monday again. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Can I suggest that you share all the code, all the files to Dropbox? That will be easier for you also and for us also to collect it. It will be in one place. Yeah, that's what. That's what they'll do. If you have some, if you just give them the mail ID, they'll just drop it there. And oh, okay. Send you mail. Uh, sir, one last question from my side, sir. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it might be it is a basic question. So, what is the I mean difference between this Hana modeler and the uh, uh, Hana development perspective. I still didn't understand the exact difference actually. What we do here and Hana what we do there. I mean, basically you deal with uh, creating your database and building your Hana modeling content, like creating about your attribute view, analytical view, or calculation views. Yeah. And as part of Hana native development, you mainly deal with developing your own custom applications, leveraging Hana native framework with SAP UI five. Your raw data services, XML, JavaScripting as a services. For front end, SAP UI5 will use, and for back end, we use all the scripting and all those things. In developing a custom application like this, we get it on our net, on our development. Yeah. And when you want to okay. so, build, building the application from scratch, this from scratch, building custom. Okay. See, when you want to build a custom application, is different. Leveraging data, uh, implementing Hana as data processing is different. You can understand for now. You lose Hana modeler when you want to work implement Hana as a data processing solution. You go with Hana modeler, okay? Right, right. When you want to develop your own custom applications and deploy onto Access Engine, then you will go with Hana develop. You can take it. Like. Okay. So in Hana, in a SAP HANA development perspective, so we are not allowed to create any calculation view. No, no, we can create. Attribute view. We can create. Even in HANA native oh. development, you can create your calculation view, attribute view, article view. You can create database. Only benefit you will have is in HANA native development. What are the object you create? You create. You have design time object and run time object both. But if I go to HANA modeler, whatever I create in the content, it will have design time object and run time object. But whatever I create in content, it will have only run time objects. catalog okay sir asal run time object ante i mean why do you we store run time object sir see support good up ipo nenu 
કેટલાક લેખી લીપી ક્રિએટ કાલમ ટેબલ ક્યુબેક્સ એટ ક્યુબેક્સ એટ ક્યુબેક્સ ઇઝ માય સ્કીમ ટેસ્ટ ડીબી ઇઝ માય ટેબલ નેમ આઈ જસ્ટ યુઝ એ integer yeah? I'll say primary key and it should not be null then I'll say EMP name yeah where can of length say let's say 20 I say this so this is my table definition okay so this is the def- is. definition of my table okay I'm executing this let's this is closed out you've gone that, that that is gone and then you get in so you say 8 cubics now tables you see this table and what was it uh, test to db this is your table yeah okay i'm seeing different so this is a runtime object now let's say i would like to edit this table again okay so if you need to edit this table again you got to alter this object but you don't have anything yeah. design time file where you can basically uh, change that file then that reflects changes to this now let's say i'll create table another way now i'll go to hana development okay i'll create some project what was the name this is the name yeah i create some project let's say i want to create some table on this right click say uh new others hana uh, database development let's say i want to create a database table from here something uh, uh, test db01 basic is fine so here i have i have kind of form json format where i need to specify all the table properties for me okay. so my schema name is uh, 8 cubics a table name already given i just wanted only two columns okay i'll just take out all this no comma uh, let's say first column is i'm just leaving it like this column one is this column two is this say primary key is only column two then i've commented i can take this out so this is a design time file okay and then i'll just say First, I need to share the project. Now, uh, uh, what I'll do? Now, I'll just activate this. i've activated this right so now if i go to my systems view and see i should see a table now uh where is what is the table now? I just scroll okay. uh, this, this, uh, this, it comes with project name colon colon test db0 okay now i would like to change this table again yeah so when i change so this is my table definition which is created here this is see this is a runtime object this is a design time object now i want to change this table out what i'll do mm. i will take this line and add one more column i'll say uh, column 3 within digit okay now again i activate this so again i should see a change in this run time object so this is design time object this is run time object you understood this now okay yeah but why, i mean why are they storing the run time objects that i mean that's what where i am little confused i mean it's just wasting memory right? ultimate run time object, time run time object is what you need your database server will understand the run time object not the design time object okay okay 
So then it will be physical memory or a virtual memory. Yeah, this is this. Okay, the, this is just like normal file, normal Notepad file. That's it. Yeah. This is the actual table in the database. Runtime object is the actual table in the database. This is like normal file. That's it. Okay, okay. runtime object is the actual definition which exists in the table exactly. in database. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actual actual object which is in the database. Okay, okay. Okay. So for everything we'll have runtime object and also the uh, if, you, if you do HANA native from if you develop things from HANA native development, you'll have design time file and runtime file. Okay. Now I created okay. I created a table from modeler, right? From yeah. modeler also I created a table with SQL prompt like test DB. Uh, then you just you only run time of up to total under the design time file item the oh, okay 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 atam endappa hana native development lo kelli nu objects develop chesina ante ni design time file untundi run time object rendu untai adhe okay hana modeler lo catalog folder lo chese objects anedi only run time objects e untai mm -hmm. content folder lo chese adhe content folder lo chesina daniki malli design time object untundi run time object rendu untai ఎడిట్ in in the in the content folder and if i just take some package and say right click new and i'll say what uh, procedure if i write this logic there now today it is 10 plus 20 tomorrow if i want to change it to 10 plus 50 i can change where if, the, if this procedure is created in the content folder if the procedure okay. is created in the catalog folder, mm -hmm. once it is created, you cannot change it at all. That's it. Because oh, this is okay. whatever you're seeing, this is a runtime definition. But whatever I'm okay. seeing in the content, this is a design time definition. Okay. Okay. Sir, sir yeah. best practice of chi content lower I don't sir. Logic sunny. Ah, sir, please in English. Ah, he was asking so the best. Actually, was asking the best practices about uh, creating in content called right because you'll have both design time object and runtime object. Then I said yes. You mean content have design time and runtime both, and catalog have runtime. Exactly. So when when you want to develop some stored procedures in the real time, we'll prefer to go with what develop the procedures in content called rather than catalog. Okay, so sir. What makes the difference? So what declaring a so what are the procedure you create here? It actually gets activated in sysbig schema. See, if I activate this procedure here, it creates a runtime actual procedure in sysbig schema. Okay, but if I want to explicitly create my procedure in my own schema, then I have to get into catalog folder. Get create procedure in catalog itself. Yeah, you getting what I'm saying? Okay, sir. Uh, yes. Okay, so what makes the difference declaring a table in modeler and uh, development perspective? Yes. Anna development perspective, you see, you'll have basically the design time file and run time file. So what happens if you develop your database in Anna development, if you, when you transport this content into my quality and then if, if those files are activated, automatically the tables are created in the database. But if you just have runtime objects, you cannot transport and activate them. You have to, you have to ex explicitly export and import the database because these are only runtime objects. Hello? Uh, then the oh, yes. way will be doing, a, doing the things in hard development so that it can create both design time and runtime objects uh, rather than the modeler. But that is the practice. But but that will, that will not work out every time because let's say you're replicating data from some SAP application into HANA through SLT. So when, when you, in that case, you don't create table. When the table is replicated, the table is created automatically into one schema. So then you'll have only runtime objects. 
will not have design time objects in that case. What I am saying is, if you are developing your own custom application, yeah, and then in that case, so which and which needs to have backend database application service front end, then you are creating creating some two three tables, then it will make sense in another native development. You create those two three tables and leverage in the service or in the front end. But if you are developing a Veros, you can, you will not have that option because you don't create those tables when the systems are replicated. When you replicate those tables, automatically the table structure is created in HANA bus. You don't create those tables from HANA native development or catalog. The tables are created automatically, so you'll have only runtime objects in that case. So generalizedly, I'm saying when you're implement when you're using HANA as a data implementing data warehousing solution or data mart, it'll be generally runtime objects created automatically when you replicate. But if you're doing a custom application development. By and you want to deploy that application on the XS engine, then you might have to create some four to five tables. Then you manually use those HANA native development, create a design time file and runtime objects. Then when I take this complete content from HANA development and transport through delivery it into quality, these tables are automatically created. There. But in in case of data warehousing, when you replicate, when you connect the SLT to quality, automatically the table gets created in quality. Also. You don't have to transport through and reactivate those tables again. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And then, Gadu, tables, what you're replicating from different source systems, will create those tables yeah, only runtime only. Exactly. And then one option you can, other option you can think is, let's say I look at the definition of VBAC table in ECC. Completely create a design time for it. Activate, then it will have design time, wayback table definition, runtime definition, that we can, but no one, that doesn't make sense. When when the replication tools are able to create those tables automatically, why do, because when you configure SLT, SLT will have its own schema. You, you cannot say, you cannot say you have to load into a table of this scheme, you can't do like this. It automatically creates a table in its own respective schema and loads data. Okay, boss. Yeah. Hello, sir, can we replicate a data source here? Can you replicate? ETC data source here? Yeah, if it is BXC, you can do that, not with this. Okay. Sir, I missed my first class, so what will be the course contents and will will be, we will be getting systems, access to yeah, systems, be, how? Yeah, for system access, you have to contact Vasu. Okay. I'll give you some okay, and for, okay. And what about the course contents? Um, uh, I mean, uh, which topics will be we will be covering? How I am? I mean, yeah, one yeah. after the another. Which topic yeah, yeah. first? Actually, I showed them the document nine seven double zero eight one six three one three. This is Vasu's number. Yeah. Okay. Contact him for the server access. And then for course content, I'll send. I'll ask them to send a mail to you all. Okay, just make sure you, they have your email ID with them, with Pawan and something. Okay, just call these people and ask them for the content. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, one more last question, sir. Sorry, to disturb. So uh, you told that there is no need. Hello. Ah, uh, can can. Ah, uh, you know you told that uh, there is no need for aggregation in uh, HANA DB, right? So there is no concept of QB is not required if you want to aggregate. Uh, there is a lot of based on this. There is a lot of difference. No need. Ante house on leda naga do. Check pena parle do. Rendu teda ondi. Otta na ki check pena parle na nand teda ondi. I am not saying okay. don't do aggregation. Okay. I am saying okay. if you don't aggregate data, it can still handle the performance. There is a lot of difference in these two. But okay. if you still do so, aggregation, you will still get more performance in it. What I'm saying is, even if you don't do aggregation of data, it can still handle that performance. Okay, 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 fine. Yeah. Okay. So if you do aggregation, it will improve the performance, right, sir? Yeah, okay, okay, thanks. Sir. Okay, thanks. Anything? Okay, thank you. We'll meet tomorrow.